Ukraine continues to astonish the global community. Not only has the nation recently shifted the momentum in its conflict with Russia, launching several successful counter-offensives deep into Russian territory, including Operation Spiderweb, but it has also introduced remarkable, domestically developed weapons and defense systems. One of these innovations, a potent homemade missile, was recently deployed with real-world effectiveness. And reportedly, even leading forces like the United States are interested in acquiring it. Here's a closer examination of what the missile is, how it operates, and why it could be a game-changer for Ukraine as the conflict persists. Before delving into the specifics, it's worth noting that Ukraine has not officially named this missile system. Throughout its development, it has carried various code names, RIM-2, GROM, OTRK Sapsan, and Operational Tactical Missile System RIM. RIM translating to Thunder in Ukrainian. The reason for withholding an official name is straightforward. As Defense Express analyst Ivan Kirichevsky explains, elaborate names serve a purpose when marketing weapons abroad, but they're unnecessary amid an active war. Today, there's no need for flashy branding. This is a fundamentally new weapon, he states. A technical designation suffices. He adds that Russia similarly employs serial numbers for its systems. Though unnamed, this missile has a compelling backstory stretching back decades. Its development began in the early 2000s, when Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council recognized the need to replace aging Soviet-era Tochka-U missiles. Progress proved erratic, frequently stalled by economic upheavals such as the 2008 financial crisis. However, following Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022, Ukraine accelerated work on the missile. That said, acute wartime pressures initially limited the allocation of funds and resources, slowing development. A turning point came in summer 2024, when the project was placed under direct oversight of the Ministry of Defense and senior military leaders, facilitating rapid advancement. Less than a year later, in mid-May 2025, the missile was tested successfully in combat. Details remain classified to prevent giving Russia an edge. According to Valentin Badrak, military analyst and director of the Center for Army Conversion and Disarmament Studies, the missile struck a Russian command headquarters roughly 185 miles from its launch point. Badrak disclosed this in an interview with Ukrinform on June 10th. He and other experts also revealed the missile's capabilities may even surpass those of top-tier American and European counterparts. Reports suggest the missile is produced at Ukraine's Pivden Mash facility in Dnipro. It reportedly has a maximum range of approximately 186 miles, 300 kilometers, depending on its configuration, and can carry over 880 pounds, 400 kilos of conventional explosives. It can be launched from mobile platforms, which offer rapid deployment and concealment, critical advantages in a war environment. A 186-mile range is significant. Launching from around 25-30 miles behind the front line enables strikes roughly 150 miles inside Russian territory. Targets might include production plants, airfields, barracks, refineries, railways and bridges, typical infrastructure Ukraine has been targeting lately. Aviation expert Kostyantin Krivolap notes that four or five of these missiles could destroy a drone production facility a task requiring far more missiles of other types thanks to the heavy 880-pound warheads. Krivolap emphasizes that this missile operates at the operational tactical level, effective against logistics hubs, command centers, and ammunition depots. Mobile launchers are another major benefit. They can fire, relocate, and avoid Russian counterattacks, unlike fixed installations which are vulnerable to drone or missile bombardment. Krivolap adds that Ukraine intends to develop variants with smaller warheads or stronger engines to boost range, especially since export treaties cap the current range at 300 km, 186 miles. For domestic use, Ukraine aims for 500 km, 310 miles. Though this has not yet been achieved, it's expected soon. If extended beyond 300 miles, new targets would become vulnerable, possibly even including Moscow. That would force Russia to relocate high-value assets further inland, easing pressure on Ukraine's front lines. Of course, these outcomes remain speculative. Continued testing and mass production are required to validate combat efficacy and ensure supply of multiple missiles for sustained strikes. Encouragingly, Badrak reports serial production has already begun. While exact monthly output is unclear, estimates suggest around 40-50 missiles monthly, a considerable boost to Ukraine's capabilities. Furthermore, Advanced electronic guidance affords impressive accuracy, overcoming limitations of older Soviet-era missiles like the Pivden Mash Tochka.
Kiricevsky notes that achieving precision comparable to Russia's Iskander system required a new class of electronics, something Ukraine struggled to produce until now. He observes, if the missile hits its target, it means we've cracked the electronics. As for Russian air defenses like the S-300, S-400 and even the more advanced S-500, Krivolap argues they lack the necessary precision and reaction speed to intercept these fast, near Mach 5, about 3800 Mainaris and Plus missiles, which reach near hypersonic velocities. The S-300 and S-400 are tuned for cruise missiles, not ballistic trajectories. The S-500, heralded by Russia as the world's best, has underperformed in actual combat. Some units were even destroyed in Crimea during a June 2024 Ukrainian strike involving US-supplied ATAK MS missiles, which bypassed Russian defenses. Ukraine has relied heavily on Western-provided weapons like ATAC MS and Storm Shadow missiles. ATAC MS, produced by Lockheed Martin, date back to the 1980s and offer 186-mile range, Mach 3 speed, and warhead options, including 500 LB unitary or cluster payloads. However, each missile costs around $1.5 million and supplies have been limited. Ukraine has used only about 50 to date. Compared to attack MS, Ukraine's domestically produced missiles match or exceed range, speed, and warhead size and offer production autonomy. Storm Shadows, Scalp, developed by the UK and France, feature 155 mile range, subsonic Mark, 0.8 speed, and 450 kilo warheads, costing around $1 million each. While stealthy, they lack the range and speed of Ukraine's new missile. Plus, Ukraine does not control their supply chain. In contrast, its own missile program grants it full production control, no reliance on foreign deliveries or political constraints. Despite its advantages, the missile isn't without limitations. Its current 186-mile range still leaves some strategic targets out of reach, and its warhead, even at 400 kilior, is insufficient to destroy deeply buried, heavily fortified structures like President Putin's bunker. Kirichevsky acknowledges that achieving such a capability would require nuclear weaponry. Krivolap adds that the missile would need a 430-mile range and a 1-100 LB warhead to strike roughly 80% of Russia's military industrial targets. Yet, even in its current form, the missile is a formidable weapon. Its mere existence serves as a deterrent and expands Ukraine's offensive options. Kirichevsky remarks that while 40 missiles won't offset Russia's arsenal of over 10,000 missiles, 800 Iskanders used April-September 2022, that doesn't mean we shouldn't strike back. With these missiles, Ukraine can retaliate more forcefully than ever before. The timing and location of its next strike, however, remain undisclosed. For further insight, you may explore coverage of Ukraine's recent cross-border strikes under Operation Spiderweb, Spiderweb 2.0 or our in-depth analysis of Russia's faltering strategy. And don't forget to subscribe to our trusted news channel for daily frontline updates.